DJ Khaled just dropped his new project titled Khaled Khaled. Now, I am excited for this one. I feel like DJ Khaled always makes pretty good album. I mean, I, it's usually it's usually a lot of hits on there. Now, if I had to give a favorite album, it had to be either between Major Key or Grateful. But nevertheless, he just continues to constantly make good music. And here we are now with Khaled Khaled. Uh, and the track list is looking pretty fire. I'm seeing features from Lil Baby, Cardi B, Her, the Migos, 21 Savage, Megan Thee Stallion, Bryson Tiller, Lil Baby. Of course, Drake, because Drake got to be on every single album that he releases. I'm seeing one with Nas and Jay-Z, some classics. They even brought back Justin Timberland. I haven't heard from Justin Timberland and literally ages and Justin Timberland is a legend so like I'm, I'm excited for this especially that single there but yeah I'm here to review the album now if you're new to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button let's get this video to about 30 new subscribers and if you are a subscriber already shout out to you go ahead and like this video and let's go ahead and get into it So who is DJ Khaled? Khaled Muhammad Khaled, and yes, his name is Khaled Khaled, which is why the album is called Khaled Khaled. <laughs> It's a 45 year old DJ, producer, executive, and media personality. Now he actually gained his initial attention from actually being a radio host on 99 Jams, along with being the DJ for Terror Squad, which is a hip hop collective featuring rappers like Fat Joe, Big Pun, Cuban Link, Prospect, Remy Ma, and many others. But working with that group, he was able to gain major credits. And that eventually led him to releasing his own solo debut album list in the album back in 2006. And that album did pretty well. It went gold and it was pretty much only up from there. Now his single, I'm So Hood from the We The Best album in 2007 was a top 20 single. And then straight after in 2008 and 2010, We Global and Victory charted both on the top 10 on the Billboard charts. And those included one of my favorite songs of all time. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, never giving up. And every time I step up in the building, everybody's hands go up. Showtime and we sing it. Hey. I ain't gonna lie, I, I probably haven't heard that song in so long, and I'm surprised that I actually remember the lyrics to the song. That that's that's actually pretty impressive. I'm I'm, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> but that was not only able to be so successful, but it went certified triple. Not one, not two, but triple platinum. Now, as you can see, DJ Khaled just continued to grow with his career over time. But it wasn't until We The Best Forever in 2011 that led him to a huge international presence. And from that point, all of his other albums continued that same success. So with this current album right here, Khaled Khaled, I'm sure this is going to have the same amount of success. There's going to be a lot of top charting singles. I won't be surprised, especially with a feature list that's just insane as this one is. I feel like DJ Khaled is at a point where he's so good to the point where any other artist that really he asked they're gonna be on it i mean they're they're gonna, they're gonna be happy to be on the album like i know i definitely would especially if i know he's gonna make some hits i mean why not but one thing that i truly respect is that he had humble beginnings his parents were immigrants and because they were musicians he was able to develop a love for music and because of his parents, but also working at the merry-go-round record store, it laid the foundations of him becoming a certified hit maker. So, I mean, if you want to make hits, I mean, go ahead and work at uh, merry-go-round. <laughs> Okay, now this is sounding pretty dang on good. Like, I'm not gonna lie. So, Jeremiah's not really, I'm, I'm not really a huge, huge, huge fan of Jeremiah. I think he's all right. Uh, but I'm digging him in this song. Now, when it comes to the production, this is sounding kind of cool. It's, it's not any drums in there yet, but it sounds pretty big just with the instrumentation itself. I love the choir that's in there. Um, it's giving me really, really, really big collet vibes. I mean, I'm, I'm not really surprised, but. I think what he's going for is an epic intro, an epic, an epic intro to the album. Uh, it's doing, it's doing that pretty well. Uh, let's see how Lil Wayne comes in. Big smile, 
Although it's painful, I look up and seek the proud. Be shameless, yeah, be now. I'm not super, super impressed with it. I think Lil Wayne's verse was kind of basic, to be honest with you. I don't know. I mean, to be the first track, I kind of expected more from this song, especially having Lil Wayne on the track. But I am impressed overall with just the amount of instrumentation that's in there. It sounds a little bit old school. I'm hearing guitar. I hear the choir singing in there that gives a lot of feel. And there's a lot of catchy riffs in the song as well. Oh, this beat's raw. This beat is hitting 100%. If I, if I play this in my car right now, my speakers are gonna be bumping. All right, I'm not gonna lie. So. For me personally, I like Little Baby on the hook. I like that part initially. Uh, I kind of got lost uh, during his verse there. But when Little Dirt came in on the second verse, it just completely gained the energy back. I felt like it was a little bit dead uh, at the beginning, but Little Bird carried the rest of the song all the way throughout. The beat is fire. Um, but yeah, I, I got to give Little Dirt the best verse here. I respect shit starters, not no shit type us. Three year break, I still get the shit hype up. Anytime I link Cali, plan them plaques hang on every wall in my palace. Cardi B is coming on hard on this. Cardi B is coming on pretty hard. She spitting some actual bars in, in this. Uh, and hey, I, I respect Cardi B 100% to the fullest. She made some really good music. You know, I, I wasn't expecting this from her. It's, it's, it's kind of giving me like a lot of, uh, a lot of Nicki vibes slash. Uh, little Kim vibes with the way she's flowing and, and, and her aggression here. So far, I'm digging it. She spins some bars. The beat is simple. Uh, that's one thing I, I, I'm not a huge fan of, the beat. But other than that, she is spitting on top of it. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. It didn't really impress me as much as I wanted it to impress me. Though it was not a bad song. Cardi B flowed on it. I think Cardi B kind of saved it, but I probably wouldn't come back to the song. Oh, uh, don't tell me they're using the, uh, uh, the they know sample. They're using the they know, and of course, DJ Khaled can get that sample cleared. Of course he can. Yeah. I'm telling you, her is so good, man. Her is so amazing. She can float on top of anything and make it sound good. This is this is great so far. I like the reggae feel that, that's going on here. Uh, and her flow on this track so far is amazing. We going crazy. Hey, hey. <laughs> and Takeoff had to come in, man. Ah, uh, okay, okay, all right, take off, all right, all right, the way you flowing is, is, is taking off, I, I give you that one. Okay, this song confirmed that I love the Migos, and it also confirmed that I love her. This is the song that I expected the first three tracks to sound like. This song is amazing, it's, it's simply amazing, I love how there's a reggae feel to it, her killed it, her killed it with the harmonics, the cook is cashy, the Migos, the ad-libs just makes it so freaking amazing, and the verse from Takeoff is just freaking phenomenal. So this is a 10 out of 10 track for me. Mm. Mm. Ooh, 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 wow, wow. Wow, the production on this song is phenomenal. Just from the first 20 seconds. Oh my goodness. Mm. Ooh. Hey, 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 hey. Megan Thee Stallion might be the best. Actually, is she the best female rapper right now? I think, you know what? I, I would give her that, that, that title. I would give Megan Thee Stallion the best female rapper right now that's out. I will happily say that she is the best right now. Man, I just feel like she always flows so hard on every track, no matter what the track is. And she always makes a a, a unique start to the track. Like I feel like when Megan's on there, the whole track just kind of follows her. It's like she's not following the track. You're, you're following her the entire time. You don't care about the product. You don't ever care about the production anymore. You just like, all right, let me see what she says and just vibe out with her. The Post Malone hook is crazy. Oh, man, I love the instrumentation there. Like, the horn sounds that's in there, it just sounds so huge and works so perfectly with Post Malone hook. 
okay, man, little baby. Why you had to do it like that, man? Little baby, you didn't have to do it that way. I, I feel like it was like he knew that every chance was, was not, you know, the best. And then he came on hard with this track and he was like, all right, I got to kill it. This is my song. Uh, this is the one. This song is hands down going to be a hit. This is an amazing song. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. This is a banger. Track five is the best song so far. I did it. It's amazing. The hook is amazing. Everything about this song is simply phenomenal. Megan Thee Stallion had the best verse on this track. That's what I think. What? Do, do y'all agree? Because I think that Megan Thee Stallion came the hardest, but that doesn't take away from Little Babies, nor the Babies part, nor Post Malone's hook. Justin Bieber is so raw. I feel like anything that he's been releasing recently has just been pretty darn good. I love his past album. I think that this feature here is sounding pretty darn good. He just rides the beat so well and his voice just sounds so... So, so phenomenal. That 808 is kicking too. The 808 is, is really, really pushing this song on this track. And it just has so much bounce. Like, it, it just makes you want to shake your head like this the entire time because the hi hats just makes it so much bouncy. The, the 808 is just punching it. It, it just fits so perfectly. It, it, wow, wow. Another good song, man. Another good song. Another good song. Uh, it's not on the same level as I did it. I did it. It's still the best song so far on this album, but. Again, I am happy with four or five and six so far. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. 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 <laughs> I think that beat is phenomenal. That beat is killer. That beat is crazy. <laughs> Bryson Tiller comes in hard with that hook. It just, it just it just sounds so lovely. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect for the beat to hit as hard as it did when it dropped. But when it dropped, I, I just couldn't stop shaking my head. I think Roddy Rich also on this track is perfect it sounds like a Roddy Rich track Little Baby also getting a lot of love on this album in general this is the third feature from Little Baby so far now I personally am a fan of Roddy Rich he is he is a person where at first I didn't give a chance and then I listened to his albums and I was like wow this guy is phenomenal he deserves to have every Grammy that he received this song proves why he's great I mean to be able to flow on a track like this and then also vibe with Bryson Tiller and also the vibe of the album right now so far, it, it's amazing. Uh, I wish it was a little bit shorter. I wish it was like maybe three minutes. But overall, it's, it's not a bad track. I'm not I'm not mad from it. I mean, I enjoyed the verse from Lil Baby. I enjoyed the verse from Roddy Rich, And also, Bryson Tiller had a chance to really showcase his thing towards the end of the song, which is pretty nice as well. Now she act different, and her ass different. Look my cash different. I'm getting weak. Hey, what my... Okay, I, I'm not I'm not liking the beat in the combination of this first verse. It 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 just, it just classes too much. I feel like the horns for one. I'm not really a bit fan. It sounds kind of like early two thousands. Uh, I'm not really digging that, and I'm not sure what's going on with the background here in in, in the production. It sounds kind of warped in the background, and I feel like this first verse is trying to make it have more energy. Or maybe the production with the horns trying to give you energy, but it's not a lot of energy in the production. It just sounds draining. I I personally don't really like this track. I don't like the effects on the voice here. It, it just sounds so weird to me. Okay, it got a little bit better when Bitch Shine verse came in, but it still has that same effect on his on his voice, which sounds kind of weird. It sounds like it's a phaser on there. Uh, I wish it wasn't that phaser on there. It, it just sounds annoying to the ear to me. The thing about it, Big Shine and Rick Ross is spitting so hard on this song. It's like, I want to like this song so badly. I promise y'all, I really want to like this song so badly, but it's just the phaser that's on the voice that's really killing it for me. It just sounds annoying, especially when the horns come in. Like, dun, 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 dun. Ah, I'm just so mad because... This song is, is I feel like it's so written well. It's written so well, but it's not engineered as well. 
first off, let's let's talk about that classic sample in there. First off, I think it's perfect for Jay Z and Nas to have a classic sample in the background. I think that the hook so far, it sounds pretty good. It sounds melodic. Uh, it's I like the melodies that's in there. I like the instrumentation that's in this track so far. Um, and I feel like it's gonna be a nice little build to the verses. Exactly. It, like I said, it, it fits so perfectly to build up into the verse. This, this gave me what I wanted, and I'm happy that it, it, it's, it's on the album. I think the beat is phenomenal. The beat is pushing you. The beat, like that 808 and that kick is just like, mm, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like you can feel it in your heart. Okay, uh, first off, Justin Timberland and Autotune here. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know if I like Justin Timberland and Autotune. Or, or better yet, I don't think it's needed, you know? I, I don't think the Autotune is needed on Justin Timberland. Like, it's Justin Timberland, you know? I feel like the, the Autotune kind of make him sound a little bit more like Chris Brown. Um, I'm a huge fan of Justin Timberland. I, I think that his voice is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. I, I think that he's performing very good on this track. It's just, from an engineering standpoint, the... Like the other tune is not needed on his voice. Yo, I swear, I love Bryson Tiller, bro. Imagine, um, just imagine if he could have had a, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name, man. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign, a Ty Dolla Sign right there. Imagine having Ty Dolla Sign. You know, just imagine. Bryson Tiller is killing it, but you know, just imagine it. It'd be great. Wow, didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Mm. Wow, that went in a totally different direction. Than I even, I, I couldn't even imagine that happening. That's the type of stuff that I like. I like, I like listening to a song and I have no idea what to expect to happen next. I love that. When it comes to sampling. Wow, I, I thought this song was going to go in a completely different direction when Bryson Tiller was on the, on the track. I'm over here talking about Ty Dolla Sign, you know, it'd be so great on the track. And then, oh my goodness, and then her comes in with a whole nother vibe with the production. It just, wow, it just sounds vibey. Man, this a banger, man. This a banger. He's so freaking hard to choose what's the best song, man. Wow, the production on this track is phenomenal, dude. Like, Wow, and it's so unique. It stands out so much from the other tracks, and I love it. I love it. Okay, so there are some bangers on this album. There are definitely some bangers on this album, and I'm not surprised by that. I think it had a shaky start to the album, but as the album continued, it just got amazing. It got very, very, very better than what I was thinking this album was going to be like. Uh, from the start. I think the production on some of these tracks are phenomenal and it's crazy how the production builds uh, throughout the track. I think this project itself is heavy 808 driven. Uh, I'm liking some of the classic samples that's in some of the tracks but there's also a lot of live instrumentation uh, that's in there. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of um, guitars and, and, and different uh, strings and, and, and instruments that just makes it so great and so full. Now, when it comes to some of my favorite tracks on the album, I have to give it to We Going Crazy, I Did It, Let It Go, uh, definitely Where You Come From, hands down, I Can Have It All, and Sorry Not Sorry. But if I had to give my top two favorites, I have to say Where You Come From, 100% it ended so strong and it, I feel like I can't not I cannot give a favor without saving that song And then after that I had to give I did it because Megan Thee Stallion the baby little baby I it, it was just a perfect combination and then Post Malone's hook is going to be the best hook of the year I'm confident that this song is going to be on the radio uh, Pretty much every day <laughs> in every city Of course it's going to be on, like I can get rid of the first three tracks. I don't need the first three tracks. I, I, I feel like there's so much other songs on here to the point where it, it's not really needed. I don't need some of the audio engineering on some of these tracks. I don't need I, I don't need auto tune on Justin's Timberland song. 
I was so looking forward to the song and then the auto tune just kind of caught me off guard. Maybe it's just me being too step skeptical. Let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about that. I think that Justin Timberlake is such an amazing singer to the point where he don't even need auto tune and it wasn't even necessary. My least favorite track, hands down, every chance I get. 100%. But one thing that stands out about this project and is kind of consistent throughout every DJ Khaled album is it's gonna it's gonna be some different tracks. It's gonna be some different tracks, some different feels uh, to attract multiple audiences. You gotta remember, DJ Khaled is an international artist, so he's gonna he's gonna attract you from many different perspectives. Now, I didn't expect the track, uh, the last track, where you come from. It caught me off guard. I also didn't expect some of the change ups in the production, especially like I can have it all. I feel like. That's what made the album, at least to me, very good. And I think that that's why some of these tracks are freaking bangers. Again, I went through and liked uh, some of my favorite tracks. 8 out of the 14 is freaking phenomenal, hands down, no doubt in my mind. 6 left. Out of those 6, 3 out of the 6, I just don't like at all. I'm definitely going to come back to this. I'm definitely going to re-listen to it 100%. And overall, I think I'm overall impressed. So let's get into the rating for the album. So for production, I had to give it a, I have to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it did a great job. Vocalism, I also give it an 8. I think her carried the vocalism here, um, but also Justin Timberlake and, and, and Justin Bieber. Songwriting, I have to give it an eight as well. I'm always impressed with some of the songwriting on DJ Khaled's albums. It's not the most, uh, I guess, moving tracks. Like it's not like a John Legend written song or anything, but it's it's something that's catchy enough. It, it's it's rememberable. Uh, will these songs last forever in the music history? It's hard to say, man. It's, and then overall, I feel I have to give it a nine again. I only didn't like three of the 14 tracks here. So I had to give it a nine. I liked the majority of the tracks. I think that the beats kept my head shaking. Uh, the verses were phenomenal. The hooks were cashy and phenomenal. Uh, and I also love the features. It's a phenomenal list. DJ Khaled did great as always. And I'm looking forward to whatever is next and some videos to come for the, some of these uh, songs. So. All together, if you add everything up and you divide by four, you get an 8.75 for the album out of 10. Again, I thought the album was pretty good, pretty solid. I'm definitely going to re-listen to this album. I have some tracks that I do love. Again, I did it. Uh, where you come from, I can have it all. These are an amazing tracks, and I had to give it to them, man. Like, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with those. Uh, but there were some songs that I weren't as impressed. So let me know in the comment section how y'all felt about the album. Let me know what some what let me know what were some of your favorite songs so I can kind of compare and see if I'm tripping or not. Leave a like on this video, subscribe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Uh, and remember, your only limitations are those in your own mind. Stevie TV out.